Yeah, yeah, you're audible. So, okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jia Singh. On behalf of Five Footprints, I welcome you all to the Alexander Fleming Award lecture. It's a great honor for me to introduce our speaker for today, is Professor Gagan Dhawan. Good to have you, sir. Professor Gagan Dhawan has done his graduation and post graduation from Delhi University, and he has done his doctorate from RGR. Currently, he is a professor in the Department of Biomedical Sciences in Acharya Nagain Today College in the University of Delhi. His teaching and research interests and several fields, including medicinal chemistry, computational drug discovery, and many materials. He has published his research in various reputations. Your sound is gone, Jia. Speak. Am I audible now? Yes, you are audible. So he was received many prestigious awards like he was the Scientific Fellowship, UGC Raman Award by the Directorate of Higher Education, Government of India, and Asia Teachers Award 2020 by the Indian National Science Academy. He is an elected fellow of uh, Indian Chemical Society and Royal Society of Chemistry, Congress. Today, we will be talking about amalgamation of AI and ML in drug discovery. Before you begin, sir, congratulations for your award. And today, we are very proud to welcome you on our platform. Now, over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Jia. Um, can I share my screen? Yeah. Please, I'm not able to share my screen. Uh, yeah, you have to allow me. To share my screen. My screen is visible uh, to you. Yes, yes it's visible. It's visible. Yes. Oh, oh, great. Uh, so, hello everyone. I am Gagan from Department of Biomedical Science. Uh, as he has already introduced me from NDC University of Delhi. So today I will be discussing. Uh, three topics and try to amalgamate all three like AI, ML and drug discovery. So I'll start with some basics, what drug discovery is, what AI is and what ML is and then try to amalgamate and then at last I'll show what research we have done and what machine learner we have developed using these techniques. So uh, this is the slide I like the most uh, from since beginning when I've started the learning. This is not a new slide. So this is one way to discover new drugs. Uh, this is Dr. Arnold Murray. He is conducting an experiment to test the theory that most great scientific discoveries were hit on by accident. So you can see how he is using chemical A, B, mixing them and try to find out the drug by hit and trial method. So this is one way to discover drugs. But uh, I'll explain you how, why not to use this methodology and try to use uh, some rational design approach while designing new drugs. So, First of all, before proceeding uh, for discovery, you should check what exactly is the need or demand of a pharmaceutical industry. So their aim is just to check, can the profits from marketing a new drug outweigh uh, the cost for developing and testing that drug? And these are the questions which are mainly important whenever you are finding, want to find a new drug. Is the disease widespread? This is very, very important. Kyunki there is a lot of cost which is involved while discovering a new drug. So you have to check whether the disease is widespread, like there's a cardiovascular disease, ulcers, malaria, any, any disease which is widespread. And does the disease affect the developed world? This is very, very important. As in case of Corona vaccine, what we want, we want it to be delivered to us as free from the government. But there is a cost which is involved in the development of that particular vaccine. So you have to check whether the disease affect the developed world. And also you have to see, 
आर द ड्रग्स ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल ऑन द मार्केट कोई पहले से ड्रग है या नहीं है यू हैव टू चेक दिस एंड इफ सो इफ दे आर अवेलेबल व्हाट आर देयर एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस देन ओनली यू कैन सी वेदर यू आर एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई अ मार्केट एडवांटेज फॉर अ न्यू थेरेपी व्हिच यू आर गोइंग टू डिलीवर दिस इज व्हाट वी वांट दिस इज अ बेसिक लॉक एंड की एनालॉजी फॉर ड्रग डिजाइनिंग बिकॉज़ दीस ऑल द पैरामीटर्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज़ यू आर ट्रेनिंग अ सिस्टम यू आर ट्रेनिंग अ कंप्यूटर फॉर डिजाइनिंग a uh, new drug so you should tell him what you exactly want so this is a simple analogy where is a key is acting as a drug and lock is a target we all know this lock and key analogy and if there is a correct fit we will say there is a reaction if it is a incorrect fit we say there is no reaction so your aim is to finding the locks for new doors very very important that means you have to identify new disease and their associated targets and then you have to test the already available keys for that particular lock that means already available drugs you have you have to check with that you have to screen these virtually screen these molecules or you can do uh, wet lab screening also then you have to design the perfect key okay you have to identify the lead and then optimize that lead i'll explain you how to optimize the lead i'll uh, in next couple of slides i'll let you know how to optimize a particular drug in that case and then followed by that you have to test the optimized molecule in vivo that means you are doing pre clinical testing testing followed by clinical testing before the drug reaches the sorry market so before the designing we should know how this uh, the grooves in the key and in the lock complementary grooves in the lock are interacting uh, in drug designing yeah your key is a drug and lock is a receptor so you should know what bonding forces are responsible for that uh, for example you have ionic interactions you have hydrogen bonding you have van der waal interactions like look at this this is the binding site of the receptor this triangular shape which you are seeing and if i zoom it it's looking like this something like this so you see there are if this is receptor is a protein there are certain amino acid residues which are present on to the active site like in this case uh, i have taken three residues uh, like phenylalanine is there you have serine hydroxyl group is there and then you have carboxylate group of aspartate is there so these residues uh, if you know already from the crystal structure of your molecule and this is the lead molecule which is coming and interacting so you have to identify which complementary groups are there so that they can interact with these three functionalities so obviously you should know that this interaction can be van der waal interactions this can be ionic interactions there is hydrogen bonding formation is there because you have hydroxyl group uh, i hope you all know what hydrogen bond is uh, this is a bond between hydrogen which is attached to electronegative element and another uh, electronegative element interaction is there but the distance is very important if you are forming this kind of interaction so uh, if i see this structure uh this molecule whenever the molecules interact it two molecules are interacting there is some conformational change which is occurring it's not like a simple lock and key mechanism there is a uh, coslent theory which say there is some induction or uh, induced fit theory which we say there is some induction in the structure some conformational change is occurring because of this interaction so you have to identify which kind of functional groups are there in your drug molecule and how you can modify those group because you have to train the system to see if this group is better or some other group having the same physico chemical properties is better uh, you'll get to know this in next couple of slides so look at this now so in this case if you see uh hypothetical uh, i'll take the hypothetical case of a neurotransmitter having three functional groups like you will see there's a phenyl and phenyl ring you have hydroxyl group and you have a positively charged nitrogen is there okay so this is a hypothetical molecule with three different binding groups and you have already seen in the receptor you have uh, three binding groups three amino acid residues having serine hydroxyl group which is capable of forming the hydrogen bond and you have ionic binding region like aspartate carboxylate group as well as the van der waals binding region in your protein molecule in our case uh, the hypothetical example we have taken phenylalanine so now look at this so uh, in this case if you see these binding groups and these three regions are there i have already mentioned so if a molecule is coming there is some interaction between a negative charge and the positive charge which we say this is these are ionic interactions and there is hydrogen bonding formation as well as there are van der waal interactions and when these interactions are occurring these molecule this molecule is pulling the carboxylate group towards itself look at this uh, this interaction because of this pulling there is conformational change is occurring and this conformational change is responsible for some other activity maybe some other signal transduction cascade which is occurring or some other process uh, downstream process which is occurring in this case so the induced fit will allow stronger binding interactions in our case so you have to identify the functional groups and how can you change that so 
you have seen in our hypothetical example you have hydroxyl group you have phenyl group phenyl group as well as the positively charged nitrogen amino group is there so these three groups you have you have to modify these groups now when you are modifying these group what are the possibilities of modification because we need hydrogen bonding so instead of hydroxyl we can have amino group there is a possibility instead of uh, phenyl alanine we can have uh, cyclohexane we can have alene anything or ethene molecule we can have similarly if you see this hypothetical molecule there is a ch2 group with an h2 that means there is a single bond and free rotation is possible you can restrict this rotation by forming a cyclohexane a cyclopentane kind of ring a five membered ring if you see uh, we can form this uh, tetrahydropyrrol kind of ring with nh2 because uh, pentane is a five membered carbon ring in this case we have nitrogen in the ring so these are the possible agonist molecules which you can, which you can design there are so many possibilities are there i am just giving three examples over here so when you are doing this uh, if you see the first aim uh, if you see this you have to keep in mind before training your computer system so identify the important binding interactions in the naso messenger and you have to design your molecule in such a way that functional groups are capable of giving the same interaction or you can say similar interactions are there like you have van der waal interactions hydrogen bonding interactions and ionic interactions are there and usually require the same number of interactions like three in our case i am giving three possibilities so whenever you are moving look at these two molecules in the first case you have instead of phenyl uh, ring you have taken cyclohexyl ring and uh, instead of hydroxyl you have taken hydrogen and in the first case also instead of nitrogen positively charged you have taken ch2 group methylene group so now look for the interactions what are the possibilities this cyclohexyl ring will form some interactions with the hydrophobic uh, region in the receptor but not as strong as in case of phenyl alanine or oh, sorry phenyl group of phenyl alanine and similarly in the second case if you see there is hydrophobic interaction as well as ionic interaction is there but hydrogen bonding is missing in this case so the structure one one if you see there is a one weak binding group showing negligible activity whereas in case of structure two you have two of three required binding groups uh, giving weak activity compared to the earlier one if you see now if we move further look at this you have all the three groups in this molecule you have phenyl alanine you have hydroxyl group you have positively charged nitrogen but you have to look for the position also you have changed or shifted the position of hydroxyl group so if i want to interact this particular molecule with the receptor there is hydrophobic interaction which is there vendor wall interactions there are ionic interactions also but the hydrogen bonding is not possible because of the increase in distance so this bonding is missing in this case so we can say the binding groups must be positioned such that they can interact with the complementary binding regions at the same time this molecule because of the free bonds can rotate and form hydrogen bonding but in case if it is forming hydrogen bonding ionic interaction is missing or the hydrophobic interaction is missing because of the conformational change in the molecule so you have to see that all the three groups must be positioned in such a way that they can interact with the complementary binding groups at the same time i hope my slides are visible and changing yes so yes sir. yes oh great so this example has three binding groups but only two can bind simultaneously in this case is it fine so now look at this molecule you have all the three functional groups hydroxyl group as well as positively charged nitrogen as well as phenyl group because i am taking you to how to develop a machine learner this is what i want to teach you today or tell you today uh, i hope uh, you will learn and you will be able to do it by yourself also so now you have a phenyl alanine ring with hydroxyl group with positively charged nitrogen as well and if you see the mirror image that is the enantiomer of the molecule this is all the three groups but the position of the hydroxyl is shifted now so when you want to interact the two molecules with your receptor in this first case all the three interactions are possible but in the second case if you see the position of hydroxyl group is shifted so the two interactions are feasible but the third one is not there so that's why we can say that one enantiomer of a chiral drug normally binds more effectively than the other this is what we can conclude but different enantiomers likely to have different biological properties in this case our desired activity is not happening but that particular isomer or an enantiomer be active for some other biological property so if we sh shift to this uh, size and shape concept if we move to this you look at this molecule you have hydroxyl group you have phenyl alanine ring with a methyl group 
that means you are adding a toluene group to this molecule as well as you have increasing the chain length of the molecule uh, you have taken the propyl group ch2 ch2 ch3 you have added that to your molecule when you add this you see you are creating a steric hindrance that means you are making your molecule a bulkier group and it is unable to enter to the active pocket so these two groups are acting as a steric block to your molecules so that means even if the fact your compound has all the required functional group but your compound is not able to enter to the receptor pocket so the agonist must have correct size as well as shape to fit into the binding pocket we can say this now if you want to design uh, a molecule which can bind but will not produce any effect that means it is acting as an antagonist with no biological activity just uh, hindering the uh, entrance of the agonist to the receptor site so that means normal messenger is blocked from binding because of the presence of this antagonist to the molecule look at this molecule now so if you see all the three interactions are all, uh, functional groups are already there like you have a droxyl you have phenylalanine ring you have positively charged nitrogen and all the three are forming the interaction but because of the ethyl chain in between ch2 ch2 in between uh, there is no conformational change simple interactions it is not uh, moving the molecule Uh, to close it because when earlier it was CH2 only, uh, it, the molecule has to stretch to move to interact with the negatively charged carboxylate group. But in this case, because if you have increased the chain length, that interaction is not uh, making the conformational change uh, in the molecule. Thus, it is just blocking the receptor but not doing any activity. So now we have taken this hypothetical molecule. If you still remember, I'll show you in a uh, different way of this. Uh, these interaction how they are changing the shape of the molecule because it is not like uh, that antagonist will not shape uh, change any shape in the molecule but yes it will change the shape of the molecule but a different change is there and that different change is uh, maybe it is uh, acting any side effect maybe another activity or no activity or at all it depends so look at this there are three regions you have to identify whenever you are doing any designing or uh, training the system you have to identify the functional groups which are present in the active pocket where my molecule is going to interact so this is the hydrophobic binding regions you have ionic binding regions as well as hydrogen bonding regions in the molecule uh, i have just given hypothetical example with serine and phenylalanine to just uh, show you so that you can appreciate how these groups are so now look at this interaction your molecule is coming inside the phenyl group is interacting with the hydrophobic region the hydroxyl group is interacting with the hydroxyl of the serine uh, to form a hydrogen bond and the positive charge nitrogen is interacting with the aspartate carboxylate group and this is giving you some change in your structure this induced it now if you take a different molecule different molecule with this extra phenyl group with ethyl chain molecule you have attached to the carbon atom of your molecule and you see there are extra hydrophobic regions which are present in the molecule so these interactions like hydrogen bonding as well as hydrophobic interactions plus the ionic interactions there is a different fit which is there because of the presence of extra phenyl group which you have added to your molecule okay so another possibility is there uh, you can see if you are designing a molecule there are chances that your antagonist which you are designed uh it is not interacting to the active pocket but it is acting to a nearby pocket like you have a receptor binding site over here but you have an extra binding site for antagonist and if your molecule is interacting in such a way that it is hiding the uh, flanking region of the antagonist is hiding the binding site for the messenger and because of that hiding your uh, ligand is unable to interact with particular receptor so first of all your aim for designing is that means abhi tak jo aapne sikha identify the structure of the protein that is very very important if you know the structure of the protein it can be through x ray electron microscopy nmr but basically most of the time we rely on x ray crystallography and it is comparatively easier to elucidate the structure using x ray than via nmr so identify the binding site you have to identify the amino acid lining the binding site define the molecular surface of the binding site very very important and that molecular surface is defined using the van der waal radius of the atoms so look at this the binding site if you look at this uh, you have to identify these atoms together how my binding sites are there where are the convex surfaces where are the concave surfaces you have to identify on those sites because now the computer is doing its job so you have to check what are the accessible as well as inaccessible surfaces to the ligands because water is already uh, surrounded these receptors 
So now the concept of training the system uh, comes into picture. So you have to develop or check the Connolly surface which we are forming going to form. That means you have uh, Van der Waals surface which is accessible to the solvent molecule. You have to identify, and then you have to take uh, um, rolling sphere over the Van der Waals surface using water molecule as such, and check where that water molecule uh, is forming a sphere. I'll show you how. So look at this. This is the binding site is there. You have taken a probe atom to check the surface, and you are moving that probe atom to different surfaces. And you have to trace this path where uh, my molecule is going inside, where the surface is accessible, or where it is inaccessible. So you have to identify two regions. One is convex region where the probe makes contact with the Van der Waals distances, and concave region where the re-entrants. If you see uh, how far the probe exits between atom linings between the binding site, so two regions you have identified. One is concave, and uh, one is convex region. Uh, you have identified and look for these binding site regions, and you have made one outlay of the computer knows now this is the surface where my molecule can come and interact, and the different side where it cannot interact. So now various DOC programs. There are different programs which they are used to filter. to remove any solutions with steric clashes between the ligand atoms as well as the binding surface like look look at the 11th number atom if you see in this case uh, it is forming a steric clash with the receptor so you, this is unacceptable binding mode so wherever there are single bonds the free where free rotation is possible you have to change the conformation and see where my uh, 11th functional group will interact with my receptor without giving any steric clash So now, uh, moving further, uh, I have just introduced you what drug discovery is because I don't want to waste much of the time on drug discovery. Now I have to brief you what artificial intelligence is, what machine learning is, what is the difference between the two. Then proceed how to move further. So you all know computers can do things uh, which only human brains can otherwise do because computers cannot do anything unless you train them. You tell them what to do. So in this case, uh, this is a very uh, Nice cartoon. I get it from Google only. So two experts are there uh, playing a chess, or there is expert system and an expert playing a chess, as well as you have expert system and a learning system, a novice child uh, who is learning how to play a chess. So you have to train this novice child or learning system. So my aim today is to how to develop this learning system. That means how to amalgamate AI and ML for our drug discovery process. So AI is a branch of computer science by which we can create intelligent machines which can behave like human, think like humans, and able to make decisions. So now you can appreciate that humans' brain uh, is extraordinary. We can do anything. Uh, we rely on computers, but its uh, side effects are, like drugs. I have told you. So you can replicate human intelligence. You can solve knowledge-intensive tasks. Uh, you can build a machine which can perform tasks like proving a theorem, playing chess. playing some surgical operation by a robots or driving a car in traffic uh, but the problem is the disadvantage is high cost because you need very high uh, ram or high very high uh, computer systems they are highly cost and can't think out of the box you have to train them or program them apne aap nahi sochenge kuch bhi they have no feelings uh, or emotions like human beings and there is obviously increased dependency on machines uh that means uh, we are losing our mental capabilities and there is no original creativity as such jo aap usko batayenge wo wahi karega kuch aur nahi karega so ab uh, thoda sa kaam jo humne karna hai kaise karenge so you have to create computer programs that get better with experience jaise uh, normally kai baar hum movie dekhte hain na to movie dekhte hue kya hota hai ki uh, aap kehte hain ki प्रिडिक्शन स्टार्ट करते हैं कैसे करते हैं आप कहते हैं आप हीरो की एंट्री होगी अब हीरो की एंट्री होगी जैसे ही विलन आया है हीरोइन को तंग कर रहा है हीरो की एंट्री होगी हीरो से बचा के ले जाएगा और फिर दोनों में शादी हो जाएगी दोनों की ऐसा कुछ प्रिडिक्ट करते हैं फिर ऑल टूगेदर कोई नई मूवी आ जाती है जिसमें कुछ अलग हो जाता है बिल्कुल कुछ अलग हो जाता है जिसका आपका ब्रेन ट्रेन नहीं था जिसके लिए इसका मतलब आपके ब्रेन को पहले से ही ट्रेनिंग था जिसको मूवी से आपने ट्रेनिंग लिया और नेक्स्ट मूवी को प्रोडिक्ट किया सिमिलरली यहाँ पे भी हम ऐसी करेंगे हम अपने कंप्यूटर को ट्रेन करेंगे विद अवर डेटा जो एक्सपेरिमेंटल डेटा हमारे पास है उसके बेसिस पे व्हाट वी डू कंप्यूटर से कहेंगे अब तुम प्रोडिक्शन करो इज इट ओके सो यू हैव टू क्रिएट कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम दैट गेट बेटर विद एक्सपीरियंस एंड देन लर्न हाउ टू मेक एक्सपर्ट जजमेंट दिस इज ओवर Aim. and then discover previously hidden potentially useful information which you have and how does it work it provides the user a learning system with examples that can be learned and there are different algorithms which can infer a characteristic model and also that particular model is used to predict whether or not 
द फ्यूचर इंस्टेंसेस जैसे मैंने कहा ना नई मूवी अगर मार्केट में आ गई जिसमें ऑल टूगेदर कुछ सरप्राइज और सस्पेंस uh, थ्रिलर था अब आपका ब्रेन उस थ्रिलर के लिए भी ट्रेन हो गया अगली बार आप कहेंगे तो उस मूवी से मैच कर रही है ये वो हॉलीवुड मूवी थी जिसमें ऐसा हुआ था सो so, आपका ब्रेन जो है उन इंस्टेंसेस से भी ट्रेन होगा एंड इट डज दिस वेरी कंसिस्टेंटली एंड वेरी वेरी क्विकली सिर्फ यही डिफरेंस है कंप्यूटर क्योंकि बहुत सारी चीज ब्रेन के लिए रिकॉर्ड करना कई बार एट वंस मुश्किल हो जाता है जो कंप्यूटर हमें हेल्प कर देता है so now we can say the ai solve the task that require human intelligence where as machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that solve specific task by learning from data jo aapne usko input kiya to make predictions so you can say now that all machine learning is ai but not all ai is machine learning so now look at the problem what we have started you all know antibiotic resistance because we are using ai and ml in drug discovery so as we all know what uh, drug resistance is so drug resistance can be developed by different mechanism like uh, you have target modification that means your target where your drug is interacting is modified uh, if it is modified your uh, ligand is not able to recognize that target and no effect or you can say uh, there is a modification in the cell wall protein because of that their um, drug molecule is not able to enter your cell or there is some antibiotic antibiotic modification is occurring because of the presence of some enzymes that means your drug is inactivated uh, into the cell because of some enzyme present in the cell which is metabolizing the drug and the drug is no more active or there is re reduced accumulation of antibiotic in the organism by over expression of efflux pumps is it okay that means if the efflux pump is over expressed it will throw out your drug from the system so now what uh, our uh, objectives we kept in mind before uh, proceeding for this artificial intelligence uh, system larger development system just hold okay. yes so do any of the experimentally tested molecules uh, i'll show you from where i get those molecules and what we did with those molecules so do any of the experimentally tested molecules potentially bind and if yes can potential binding sites be discovered first objective first of all you have to see whichever experimentally you are saying this particular compound is acting as antibacterial so you should know where it is binding and what are those binding sites because you have to train the system next time whenever you are using this system as a machine learner it will be able to define like suppose your molecule has one benzene ring which is uh, going inside and acting as a drug molecule and a second molecule which has two benzene rings together or three benzene ring together like naphthalene or anthracene if you see these molecules the flux pump is able to pump them out so now you know the molecules having single benzene ring are active because they are going inside the cell and acting they are not Uh, coming out from the cell because of the presence of a flux pump so you have to look for the structures what factors will determine whether compounds having a particular structure are likely to be pumped or not pumped jaise maine abhi bataya ek benzene ring do benzene ring teen ye just ek hypothetical example hai but yes hum any sare parameters ko consider karenge they can be benzene ring they can be hydroxyl group they can be amino group aapko sare parameters consider karne hai looking at the structures and then you have to check whether there is a correlation between the ratio of efflux and the physical chemical properties of the compounds i'll let you know what physical chemical prop physical chemical properties are and then when you have done up to this much then you see is it possible to predict the compounds that are more likely not to be pumped our aim kya hai hum chahte hain hamare jo compounds hum banaye wo pump out na ho cell ke cell ke andar jaye aur apna kaam kare this is our aim so you have to explore is there is any correlation between the results of experimental study and the virtual uh, simulation studies which which we have done and to modify the existing inhibitors kyunki hum chahte hain ki dekhiye koi bhi drug aapke paas market mein ho aap sabse pehle dekhte hain wo effective hai ya nahi hai uska koi side effect to nahi hai fir uska modifications karte hain kis liye kisi tarike se cost kam ho jaye ya uska side effect kam ho jaye kam dose mein kaam kare taki aur cost kam ho jayegi yahi to hamara aim hai so you have to modify the existing Any methods to get more specific compounds which can be treated as leads. So we survey different crystal structures which are available for efflux pump. So, आपको start करने का procedure यही है कि आप survey कीजिए जो different structures available हैं and how the drug-like molecules interact within the binding pocket. You have to look for that. And then you have to do uh, molecular simulation studies to uncover the correlation between docking and experimental data. and to identify sirf yahi nahi kar liya normally aajkal most of the time mein students se discussion jab bhi hota hai wo kehte hain ek software humne use kiya sir ye data aaya hai wo to koi wo to computer kar raha hai aapka role human intelligence us picture mein kaha hai this is our aim is 
So you have to uncover correlations between docking and experimental data and to identify the molecular features that are important for biological property of interest. In our case, in this case, it is pumped and non-pumped. So what we did, we get around 1500 molecules from the McMaster STS lab. This is the lab of one of my collaborator in UK, Ian Wildian. He has given me these list of molecules, which was already experimentally tested. So uh, they have tested these molecules on E. coli with two different stains. One is MC1061 and one is plus ACRB. So these two stains, one is a hyperpermeable stain, which is 1061 and plus ACRB. These are, these are the stain where efflux pump is overexpressed. So one where efflux pump is overexpressed and the another is a hyperpermeable strain is there. So what we did, there's a normal protocol which we follow for any machine learning tool. So we have uh, checked these molecules and then split the data into training test and validation sets. So what is basis pe kya? I'll come to that. So what we did out of 1475 molecules, we calculated the four suppression, check the four suppression values of the experimental data. And we see, uh, we took two as a uh, threshold value. If the value is less than two, four suppression value less than two, we say that uh, the compound is not pumped. If it is more than uh, 20, we say it is highly pumped. And what about the compounds which are between two to 20? That is a dicey situation. So that is in between situation. So we have to check out of those molecules, 920 out of 1475 molecule, 921 molecules were between two to 20 range. So we checked using the learner what we have developed. The, out of these molecules, can my learner predict out of 920 molecules, how many molecules are pumped, can be pumped or not pumped. So then we prepare the learner data set and this learner has taught structural features using a make Bayesian learner. You can use different approaches. There are different um, tools for machine learning, like support vector machine. There can be neural networks. But what we use is uh, Bayesian learner. And then check the prediction accuracy of the learner, what we have done. So you, we classified the data into pumped and non-pumped. And simultaneously, we did the molecular simulation studies for 1475 molecules. And after that, we tried to correlate between the experimental results, that is force suppression, and the docking scores, which we got using the molecular simulation studies. And then apply the model to the unseen data set to further validate the model. Unseen means a new movie you are going to see. And in new movie, you have to predict that now the hero will entry or not. This is what you are going to predict. Because you have trained your system to that. And now you have trained your system to that. And now you have trained your system to that. And now you have trained your system to that. And now you have trained your system to that. So Drishyam movie, if you look at it, it was all together a new suspense. So the new suspense is that we have trained our brain. If there will be a new movie, we will predict how it will happen before. So that means that your training set should be a very huge set of data that we will train. So what we have done is a confusion matrix design, wherein we have observed class as well as the predicted class, wherein we have observed class, we have observed class, as well as the predicted class, wherein observed class, we have two pumped and non-pumped, as well as in predicted class, we have pumped and not pumped. I hope you all know what is true positive because most of the uh, participants here are students. So uh, you should know what true positive, false positive, false negative, and true negative are. So if the observed class, which is experimental, as well as the predictive class, both are pumped. That means your prediction is saying that this is this molecule can be pumped out, as well as the experimental data is showing the result that it is pumped. So we say this is true positive. Similarly, if your prediction class is saying pumped, but the observed class is saying not pumped, we say false positive. And similarly, you have false negative and true negative. And the number along the major diagonals represent the correct decision. And the numbers of this diagonals, that means two positive, two negative, they are correct decisions. Whereas the numbers of this diagonal represent the error. That's why we use the word confusion matrix for this. So we say uh, this represents the error between various classes. And then we calculated various uh, parameters like uh, false prediction rate, positive prediction value, negative prediction value, accuracy, specificity, FDRs. We calculated all these values on the basis of the data which we got. And then we plotted the ROC curve. And when we plotted between ROC between true positive rate and the false positive rate, we see uh, the AUC value area under the curve which we are getting is 0.893. That means 89.3% prediction accuracy with these 1475 molecules only. So this is what we are getting, approximately 90% you can say. 
So then we uh, further move to principal component analysis for our data in two dimensions, uh, wherein uh, we have taken the fold separation values. We see, uh, I've told you already, we have taken the fold separation less than two, greater than 20, and in between two and 20, where uh, 921 molecules were there in between the range two and 20, which is a confusing zone for us. So these are the physicochemical parameters. Uh, if you see, uh, these are the different descriptors, like partition coefficient, solubility, weight, uh, number of positive atoms, hydrogen bond acceptors, PSAs, polar surface area, halogen and rotatable bonds. And these are the values for molecules which are pumped and not pumped. And then what we did, out of the docking score of 1475 molecules, we took the top 100 dock molecules. And out of the top 100 dock molecules with three different receptor molecules. This is 2W1B, 2DRD and 1T9X. These are all efflux pump proteins. So we dot all the 1475 molecules with the three protein molecules and we see 41 molecules. If you see the Venn diagram, 41 molecules are common in all three. And these are the interactions which are there, uh, how these molecules are interacting with the receptors. And these are some of the dock complexes. I'm not going into detail. And these are important crucial interactions which are there in 2DRD, 2W1B and 1T9X, uh, where their hydrophobic interactions are there as well as hydrogen bond formations are there. So now you can say that out of all the data what we got, we can say that pumping of the molecules by multi-drug efflux pump is a major contributing factor to resistance, already reported and known fact. And the experimental data which we got was incorporated into statistical model. In this case, we have used Nave, Bayesian, Lerner uh, using machine learning method and three different crystal structures of the efflux pumps were surveyed to get a detailed insight into how the drug molecules interact within the binding pocket. And such a combined approach of using experimental data set and the molecular docking and virtual screening will assist us in identifying molecules with features important for not being pumped and could further be developed into leads. So in conclusion, we can say that small molecule descriptor and property information, property means physical chemical property information integrated with docking analysis allow a correct classification uh, with 90% accuracy, 89.3, I've uh, shown you the area under the curve which we got from ROC curves. And this approach is a powerful tool by which commercially available chemical space can be prioritized to increase the probability of identifying the structurally distinct compounds with diverse bioactivities. But the problem, we have done 1475 molecules, but, but there are certain problems which we want to improvise. And now we are getting, this learner is already developed, more and more molecule experimental data uh, people are sharing with us and we are feeding into this. So through this machine learning method, though it works very fast for screening large databases, but the model will work best when applied to libraries with feature distribution that are similar to those of the training set only, which was used to generate the model. Just like you said, one benzene ring, two benzene ring. You have trained it from that. You didn't see that in the benzene whether there was an amino group, hydroxyl group, or methyl group was there or not. You have the features of those molecules which were tested and already trained it from that. You have trained it from that. And the structural features learned by our model do not represent a huge chemical space. That is approximately 10 raised to power 60. Molecules are already there in the chemical space. Therefore, pumping behavior of the molecules can be influenced by other structural features which are not included in developing the model. And there is also a possibility that the hits could be biased. When you have limited, like I said, you have seen a movie example. If you have seen a movie in one way, then you will be biased in that way. What you have seen, your biasness will move in that way. Same computer ke saath hai, aapne usko kuch nahi aata, you have trained the computer. So there is a possibility the hits which you have used could be biased towards training set like molecules only. Thus, it has limited scaffold hopping activity and therefore we need sampling of more compounds. That means increasing the volume as well as diversity. Very, very important point. Diversity, that's why when a bold chaos point ko, uh, volume as well as diversity of the chemical space will improve the prediction ability of the above described model. So up again, up further, what changes can you do? This is important. So you have to examine the change in prediction. You have prediction that your learner has that this type of molecules, which has one ring, it will go out, it will go out, it will go out, it will go out. This is your system predict. Now you have to examine the change in prediction when small structural changes are made to the molecules. You can virtually do it. You have made two benzene, you have made modifications. Sometimes you have made toluene, sometimes you have made phenol, sometimes you have made amine. You can change that. Change in predictions when small structural changes are made to the molecules. And now check for prediction accuracy. And check for consistency of predictions by other machine learning methods also. Because this is only Bayesian. 
and to check the increase in prediction accuracy of the generated model there is a need to visually examine this part is very 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 important so as a chemist i am telling you you have to visually examine all the molecules that are incorrectly predicted abhi tak to jo correct prediction hai wo experimental as well as your learner which is predicted predicting your molecule ke pump in ho gayi hoga that means true positive or true negative chalo koi baat nahi ho to theek hai but jo incorrectly predicted hai by the naive bayesian classifier you have to incorporate those structural changes physical chemical uh, parameters into your trainer set so and try to incorporate those features and attributes in training the learner you have to do that jaise maine abhi drishyam wala example aapko diya movie ka aapko un features ko bhi apne training mein involve karna hai next time so the model can then be applied to other unseen data sets to distinguish molecules with an increased likelihood of not being pumped from being pumped एंड दिस मॉडल क्योंकि मैंने भी बताया हमने जो किया फ्लक्स पंप और इकोलाइज जो डेटा था हमारे पास 1475 मॉलिक्यूल्स का वो इकोलाइज स्ट्रेन एम सी और प्लस ए में किया गया था जो मैंने अगर रिकॉल करें एक हाइपर पंडी स्ट्रेन है और एक जिसमें फ्लक्स पंप इज ओवर एक्सप्रेस सो दिस मॉडल कैन फर्दर भी अप्लाई टू अदर मेटीरियल पैथोजन एंड फर्दर टू असिस्ट इन डिसीजन विच मॉलिक्यूल टू टेस्ट एक्सपेरिमेंटली फ्रॉम द अवेलेबल केमिकल स्पेस यही हम चाहते हैं हम नहीं चाहते ज्यादा से ज्यादा मॉलिक्यूल्स को हम प्री क्लिनिकल टेस्टिंग पे लेके जाए एनिमल सेक्रीफाइस करें कंप्यूटर का बेनिफिट यही है कि हम किसी तरीके से उस काम को रिड्यूस कर दें सो वी वॉन्ट के जनरेट रैंक लिस्ट ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर अकॉर्डिंग टू सिमिलैरिटी अब आप देखिए आपके मॉलिक्यूल में सिमिलैरिटी क्या है एट द स्ट्रक्चर लेवल जो पंप हो रहे हैं और जो पंप नहीं हो रहे हैं एंड देन सॉल्व दम इन ऑर्डर ऑफ डिक्रीजिंग सिमिलैरिटी and then to confirm that the ligand binding observed had functional significance agar aap waqai mein chahte hain ki us oh group aur ns2 aur methyl group ki wajah se change aaya hai you have to mutate the residues near the ligand binding sites and measure the mic values in stain expressing these site directed mutants of acrb usse pata chalega yes isi ki wajah se effect ho raha hai ya nahi ho raha but there are certain challenges aap sochiye sab kuch hone ke baad bhi uh, itni jaldi drug market mein nahi aa pa sakta drug development we all know is a lengthy complex process or costly indeed and entrenched with high degree of uncertainty aapka sare trials theek chal rahe hain clinical trials bhi theek chal rahe hain but market mein jaane ke baad hamne phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 sab acche se hua but jaise pms hua post market surveillance aapki drug ko withdraw karna pad gaya market mein aane ke baad koi side effect jisko aap pehle uh, identify nahi kar paye ye possibility hamesha hoti hai so key points to learn whenever you are doing your as a student you are coming into research so you have unknown biological mechanisms first of all you should know the mechanism which you are trying to inhibit and lack of validated and therapeutic biomarkers for disease very very important challenging task is there there are also translational failures using animal models hum har cheez animal models pe karne ki koshish to karte hain jab humans pe aati hai to zaruri nahi hai wo sari ki sari cheeze humans pe bhi bilkul theek waise hi follow ho jaise aapne animal models pe kiya tha so animal models cannot recapitulate an entire disorder or a disease and there is lack of clinical phenotyping and patient stratification is there so greater emphasis on human data might lead to improve target identification and validation and most important nowadays inability to rely on published data so please uh, as a student my suggestion is never try to manipulate your data because most of the time people are using your data to proceed further so agar aapne kahin bhi data manipulation kiya hai scientific community ko bahut major loss hone wala hai बिकॉज रिपोर्टिसिबिलिटी रिमेन्स अ क्रिटिकल इश्यू फॉर ट्रांसलेशन और सबसे खतरनाक जैसे मैं मानता हूं इन ए डिक्यूएट कोलेबोरेशन अमंग एडमिया इंडस्ट्री एंड गवर्नमेंट हम कोलेबोरेशन से बहुत डरते हैं आई डोंट नो द रीजन वाई करते हैं बट डरते हैं सो कोलेबोरेशन इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन एवर यू वॉन्ट टू डू गुड रिसर्च सो दिज आर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रीड दिज आर द टू पेपर्स फॉर टू थाउजेंड एटीन वॉट वी डेड इन कोलेबोरेशन आई डेड ओनली द कंपिटेशनल पार्ट इन दीज पेपर्स so all the computational work was done by me and the four authors before shoy and hamchin lingli and he huang they did the chemistry work and the later people did the biology work, biological work at harvard and uh, university of massachusetts they did the chemistry work and computational work was done by me in 2018 and recently we also published a paper in 2021 uh, the same uh, for the cbp bromodomain inhibitors designing of these molecules and these are my collaborators ian wildian who from whom i got the data data for my machine learning and uh, professor v jang and u mas boston my phd scholars uh, indu nishtha hari krishna hirak akanksha and vadan uh, and special thanks to professor sujata professor sonika and all the members of uh, biofootprint foundation and last but not the least my wife and daughter and uh, 
कार्टून से बहुत प्यार है मुझे सो एक अलग स्लाइड ये भी मुझे ऑनलाइन दिखी अच्छी लगी सो अगर आप अप्रिशिएट करें इसे माई फ्रेंड्स एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ अवर एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन वी हैव लॉस्ट अ डियर एंड वैल्यूड कुलीग ऑन द अदर हैंड वी जस्ट गेन अ पब्लिकेशन सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर अटेंडिंग एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रोफेसर सुजाता फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंटरक्ट विद माई फ्रेंड्स माई स्टूडेंट्स माई कलीग्स थैंक यू सो मच thank you so much sir i must say it's a very informative lecture and how you explained artificial intelligence and machine learning with your beautiful examples <laughs> it's very great so we are now open for questions if uh, anyone has yes. any questions they can write down or ask i think uh, first of all i would like to um, pitch in here and say thanks a lot uh, dr gagan i just enjoyed your lecture so much the way you have simplified uh, such complex uh, scientific phenomena and you have simplified it using examples uh, of movies and especially drishyam i enjoyed this so much and you know this is what science promotion is about this is what science popularization is about that you can simply simplify extremely complicated terms uh you know absolutely break them down and present them to uh the people who are listening to you in such a way that they understand everything what a fine mind you have i'm really really uh, what should i say i'm really awed really impressed thank you so much yeah, thank you for the time actually yesterday i request uh, i'll uh, let the participant know i requested professor sujata though i was very fast in my talk i requested yesterday can i take 40 45 minutes for my talk so she said yes सो so, क्योंकि 15-20 मिनट में किसी चीज को बताना इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट सो टाइम थोड़ा सा ज्यादा चाहिए अदरवाइज नेक्स्ट टाइम इफ आई गेट टाइम आई डेफिनेटली टेल यू हाउ टू डेवलप दीज लर्नर्स एंड ऑल यू कैन डू दैट सो थैंक यू प्रोफेसर सुजाता फॉर द टाइम एक्स्ट्रा टाइम यू गेव अस थैंक यू सो मच सो वी हैव वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम अनामिका सिंह शी हैज राइट सर बिसाइड नेव बाइजन What are the other ML methods we can use in computational drug design, and how to decide so, so you, which method, method and algorithm should be used well? It depends. They can like you have support vector machines are there, you have neural networks are there. Uh, there are different tools which are already available, or uh, there are uh, random networks. There. You you can use them. It depends what your problem is exactly. What your problem is. Like in this case, uh, we have only want to check for uh, bound and non-bound uh, only classification for these two things. So Bayesian is the best one in our case. So what you are what you exactly want, you have to let us know. Uh, you can contact me and let me know. We can then uh, we can guide on guide you on that. It depends. Har har ek hi thumb rule hi lagega ye yaad rakhiyega. There is no thumb rule for that. What your aim is, you know, first of all, that's why I started with the target. What your aim is. First of all, we should know this. I told you in my lecture also. Most of the students, what they are doing, there are so many good tools which are available. Like starting with Autodoc, Schrodinger. There are so many tools which are there. So, or most of the students normally do what they are doing. Just data food feed, do their virtual screening, do their paper, and they are done. So our aim is not just to publish papers. Our aim is to get something. You, you see, I will tell you that I have never published so many papers in my life. In life. कंप्यूटेशनल में छापने के लिए सो मच विच इज देयर यू कैन जस्ट डू डॉकिंग वर्चुअल स्क्रीनिंग एंड पब्लिश इट इवन कोरोना टाइम में आप देखिए लोगों ने कितना किया बट उसको कितने लोगों ने लैब से मार्केट लेके जा रहे हैं वो क्वेश्चन है दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट डूइंग एंड पब्लिशिंग इज वेरी इजी आई एम टेलिंग यू आई एम टेलिंग यू बट अवर एम इज एज अ स्टूडेंट माई सजेशन इज आप ऐसा काम करें जिससे आप लैब से मार्केट तक लेके जाए एम ऐसा होना चाहिए और मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ दो पेपर्स मैंने आपसे शेयर किए हैं दे आर ऑलरेडी पेटेंटेड मॉलिक्यूल्स फिर पेपर आए हैं उसके बाद एंड ऑलरेडी 2018 वाले पेपर के जो ड्यूल इनिवेटर है ऑलरेडी कंपनी ने परचेज भी कर लिया है तो कुछ ऐसा करिए जिसमें आपके पास uh, बाद में रिटर्न भी आएगा नो डाउट विल गेट मनी ऑल्सो और सबको मनी चाहिए आपको भी मुझे भी एवरीबडी नीड्स मनी तो कुछ ऐसा करना चाहिए जिससे आपके बेनिफिट हो ये प्लीज So, Dr. Satendra Singh has right. Uh, thank you, sir, for such a nice completion on drug designing. Thank you, by Putman teams, and Dr. Nikhit Manzoor has right. Excellent talk, Dr. Gagan, and uh, Saima Ahmedi has right. Uh, sir, you talked about drug resistance. So far, uh, example, many pathogens are constantly mutating, like SARS-CoV-2 viruses. So, in that mm -hmm. case, how you decide the algorithm? 
उसके लिए प्लीज एक चीज याद रखिएगा इफ अ वायरस इज म्यूटेटिंग और बैक्टीरिया इज शोइंग रेजिस्टेंस बिकॉज ऑफ द म्यूटेशन अगर आपने सिस्टम को ट्रेन किया है विद द फंक्शनल ग्रुप और अमीनो एसिड रेसिड्यू विच वॉज बिफोर द म्यूटेशन तो सिस्टम की ट्रेनिंग उतनी है यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट ये नहीं तो आपको नेक्स्ट टाइम उसे ट्रेन करना पड़ेगा विद अ न्यू म्यूटेशन विच इज देयर दैट्स वाई मैंने बोला ना आपसे यू हैव लास्ट पॉइंट जो मैंने डाला था उसमें लिखा था कि यू हैव टू यूज साइट डायरेक्टेड म्यूटेंस ऑल्सो टू चेक वेदर दीज फंक्शनल ग्रुप्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट और नॉट फॉर इंटरेक्शन सो आप ये भी ध्यान रखिएगा हो सकता है उस म्यूटेशन की वजह से आपका मॉलिक्यूल इंटरेक्ट कर भी सकता है और नहीं भी कि दैट पर्टिक्युलर रेसिड्यू विच वॉज म्यूटेटेड वॉज नॉट एट ऑल रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द इंटरेक्शन और मे बी इट वॉज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इंटरेक्शन इट डिपेंड्स तो आपको विजुअली एग्जामिन करना पड़ेगा उन सब चीजों को कि म्यूटेशन क्या है उस म्यूटेशन से कितना चेंज आता है जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई टेल यू वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल आपने देखा ना सिकल सेल एनीमिया सिकल सेल एनीमिया को अगर आप देखें अ सिंगल रेसिड्यू चेंज एक इतना ड्रास्टिक म्यूटेशन चेंज कर देता है और कितने सारे ऐसे चेंजेस होते हैं जिससे कोई प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चर पर फर्क ही नहीं पड़ता तो इट डिपेंड्स कि वो कौन सा रेसिड्यू है किस पोजिशन पे है उसका कितना बड़ा रोल है इफेक्ट करने में नाउ यू आर गेटिंग माई यू गॉट माई पॉइंट और नॉट Yes, तो जो भी आप आ, साइमा सा, साइमा ने बोला ना साइमा जो भी आप म्यूटेशन आप देख रहे हैं जो आप करना चाहते हैं पहले स्ट्रक्चर्स को ठीक से देखिएगा जिस भी टारगेट को आप ले रहे हैं उस टारगेट में उस पर्टिकुलर रेसिड्यू को जिसको आपने म्यूटेट किया है वो कितना क्रूशियल था फॉर एक्टिविटी और इंटरेक्टिंग विद द मॉलिक्यूल विच यू ऑलरेडी हैव सो यू हैव टू लुक फॉर दो मॉलिक्यूल विच यू ऑलरेडी हैव एंड देन यू आर प्लानिंग टू डिजाइन अ न्यू मॉलिक्यूल विच इज गोइंग टू इंटरेक्ट विद द म्यूटेटेड वन This your aim was. Is it okay? She said. Please, Saima, yes, okay, okay, okay or not okay? Please. She has written yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Saima. So, and Amika Singh has one more question: Is deep learning yes. different from machine learning, or it is same in drug discovery process? Ah. Uh, good question uh, i'll explain you deep learning you know what deep learning is exactly what data mining is what deep learning is because these are all subsets of a particular artificial intelligence which we are using first of all you have you should have data with you if you want data you have to do data mining you have to extract the data and then to get some information from that data some ka matlab hai maximum jitni aap nikal sakte hain so that information can be used to train the system this is what we are doing so ye sab cheeze hum use karenge to develop your machine learner which can be used or develop further as a artificial intelligence machine which can think as human behave as humans maine pehli definition mein bataya tha hamara target wahi hai but wahan tak jaane ke liye aap sochiye it's not easy it's not easy तो आपका जो डेटा पेज जो मैंने केमिकल स्पेस का जिसका जिक्र किया टेन रेस्ट पार अप्रोक्सीमेटली सिक्सटी मॉलिक्यूल्स आर देयर उतना केमिकल स्पेस की ट्रेनिंग चाहिए सिस्टम को कि कोई भी नया मॉलिक्यूल अब आप डिजाइन करें हमारे पास सारे पैरामीटर्स ऑलरेडी हैं डेट्स इट मिथाइल आएगा तो ये होगा अमीनो होगा तो ये होगा ये होगा तो ये होगा ऐसे और सबको करने के लिए मशीन लर्निंग है चाहे डीप लर्निंग सबके टूल्स हैं डिफरेंट एल्गोरिदम्स हैं विच वी यूज इज इट फाइन Okay, Anamika, is it okay? She goes. And uh, Thunder Ong has written, "Thank you, sir, for an insightful talk and explaining things very well as well as always." And Shivangi Verma has one question. Said, uh, "Please tell for building a machine learning model using structural and sequence variation in the spike protein for SARS-CoV-2 for immuno escape." Hey, please, I, I, please, this question. Hey, please, slowly. I have not listened. I will see one more question. Yes. Okay. Building a machine please learning model using structural. I am reading. Building a machine learning variation. model mm -hmm. and sequence variation in the spike protein for SARS-CoV-2 for immune escape. Yes. बट इसमें क्वेश्चन क्या है मुझे अभी भी समझ नहीं आया प्लीज टेल फॉर बिल्डिंग बिल्डिंग मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल यस 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 यू 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 कैन डेवलप अ मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल फॉर दिस आल्सो बिकॉज यू हैव ऑलरेडी ऑलरेडी रिटर्न इन द क्वेश्चन दैट यू यू हैव स्ट्रक्चरल एज वेल एज सीक्वेंस वेरिएशन सो नाउ यू हैव टू ट्रेन द सिस्टम विद 
what kind of structural modifications are there what kind of modifications are there it's easy to develop it for drugs kyunki drugs are small molecules protein as a whole is a huge molecule and ek cheez aapse bata de protein molecule mein whenever something is interacting with the active pocket there there are two possibilities either there is a conformational change only in the active pocket or that conformational change may lead to some change in some other pocket nearby pocket or a distant pocket this is possible so all these possibilities you have to train with these possibility to the learner then only it will predict ki ye wala structural change karenge to ye aayega ye sequence mein change hoga to ye aayega and structural changes or sequence mein bahut difference hai dekhiye sequence it's a huge sequence space jaise aap primary structure ki baat kar rahe hain but when you come to protein structure as tertiary or quaternary structure there is a huge drastic change is there so number of residues ka mutation jo aap sequence level pe kar rahe hain aur jo aap structural level pe kar rahe hain किससे कितना फर्क आना है वो बहुत मैटर करता है और सीक्वेंस से बहुत ज्यादा आएगा क्योंकि प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर एज सच कुछ इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं देगा आपको अनलेस एन एंटिल आपको पता हो फोल्ड कैसा ले रहा है सो दैट स्ट्रक्चरल वेरिएशन इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज ऑफ द सीक्वेंस ऑफ द अमीनो एसिड रेसिड्यूज वी कैन डेवलप दैट बट आप पहले आपकी प्रॉब्लम क्या है क्या डेवलप करना चाहते हैं यस व सास बिल्कुल कर सकते हैं और ऐसा नहीं है लोग कर रहे हैं ये बस सोचिए देर सो मेनी पेपर्स ऑन दिस टूल डेवलपमेंट फॉर सार सीओ टी सी सीओ वी टू यू कैन चेक फॉर दैट मैंने कभी इस पर नहीं किया नेवर आई ऑनली डेड विद ड्रग्स एज सच अनामिका सिंह हैज वन मोर क्वेश्चन शी सेड सर सम स्मॉल मॉलिक्यूल्स ड्रग में रिस्पॉन्ड एंड मल्टी मोटालिटी वे however current machine learning approach focus on developing single data modalities so do you think yes, this agar, still need advancement as there is lack of yes 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 dekhi mujhe main agar aapka question theek se samajh raha hu to aap yahi kehna cha rahe hain jise hum aaj kal drug repurposing kehte hain kuch aisa hi soch rahe hain ya kuch kyunki answer mai us direction mein nahi kar paunga yes sir yes sir yes, drug repurposing ke liye drug repurposing, drug repurposing hi soch rahe hain to dekhiye drug repurposing ka case ye hai abhi maine aapse kya bola tha आपने कभी एक एक टर्म बोलूंगा आप बताइएगा आपने ऐसा कभी सुना या नहीं सुना नॉट इवन अ सिंगल ड्रग इन द मार्केट जिसका साइड इफेक्ट ना हो ऐसा बोलते हैं ना यस सर व्हाई वी यूज दिस टर्म लाइक दिस नॉट इवन अ सिंगल ड्रग जिसका साइड इफेक्ट ना हो क्योंकि देखिए वी हैव ओनली ट्वेंटी अमीनो एसिड रेसिड्यूज विच आर देर जिसकी हम बात कर रहे हैं लाइक एलानिन ग्लाइसिन ल्यूसिन ट्रिप्टोफेन अब आप सोचिए आपने ड्रग मॉलिक्यूल डिजाइन जो पहला हमने किया था वो हमने क्या सोच के किया था कि फिनाइल एलानिन हो और क्या क्या हो बोलिए सीरिन हो और स्पार्टेट हो अब कोई ऐसी भी तो जगह हो सकती है जहां पे फिनाइल एलिन और खाली स्पार्टेड और सीरीन ना हो तो जो मेरा ड्रग मॉलिक्यूल है वो तीनों सब ना सही दो पे तो हेलो करके जाएगा टच करेगा उसे एंड yes. वो yes. जो इंटरेक्शन है दैट माइट लीड टू सम साइड इफेक्ट और माइट लीड टू सम अदर बायोलॉजिकल इफेक्ट विच इज डिजायरेबल लाइक एंड लाइक छोटे से एग्जाम्पल आपसे देते हैं वाइगर वॉज अ ड्रग विच वॉज डेवलप फॉर बीपी पेशेंट्स बट जैसे ही कंपनी को पता चला दिस इज दिस कैन बी यूज टू ट्रीट द इरेक्टाइल डिसफंक्शन उस ड्रग को लॉन्च कर दिया उन्होंने क्योंकि मार्केट प्रॉफिट मैंने सबसे पहले बोला था ना कंपनी प्रायोरिटी देखती है अपनी प्रॉफिट कहां पे होगा तो अब आपकी सेम ड्रग जो कि नोन ड्रग है मैंने इसलिए इस ड्रग का नाम लिया क्योंकि मोस्ट ऑफ आस नो दिस ड्रग दिस इज सेलेज नेम दिस ड्रग द केमिकल नेम which we normally use uh, the term vigraph for that there is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor so this phosphodiesterase inhibitor okay let me going is there not okay yes is it fine yes you got my point or not so ye bilkul har baar hoga ji jo drug aap dekh rahe hain wo kisi aur jagah bhi kaam aa sakti hai because of this interaction thing only तो ये इंट्रैक्शन एक जगह पे हो रही है तो दूसरी जगह पे भी होगी नहीं होगी ये जरूरी नहीं है हो सकती है ना हो अच्छी बात है बट नहीं होगी ये जरूरी नहीं है मॉलिक्यूल है ना उसके लिए तो कुछ भी उसको तो कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री ग्रुप देखना है तो अगर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री फंक्शनल ग्रुप इज देयर इट इज गोइंग टू इंटरक्ट कंडीशन इज डिस्टेंस दैट पार्ट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कितने डिस्टेंस लाइक आई एम सेइंग हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग पॉसिबिलिटी जैसे हमने हाइड्रोक्सिल की पोजीशन शिफ्ट की थी अगर आपको याद हो तो हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग पॉसिबिलिटी को अगर मैं देखना चाहता हूं तो एक डिस्टेंस है कि इट शुड बी लेस देन फोर और थ्री पॉइंट फाइव ऑक्सट्रॉन यूनिट अगर जैसे दो लोगों को हैंडशेक करना है तो दो लोगों को अगर हैंडशेक करना है तो एक पर्टिकुलर डिस्टेंस है जहां पर दोनों का हाथ टच हो पाए एक रूम के इस कॉर्नर पे एक रूम के उस कॉर्नर पे हैंडशेक नहीं होगा सो दीज टू इंडिविजुअल हैज टू कम क्लोज टू ईच अदर फॉर हैंडशेक ये सो नो 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So this is what we want. So that distance part, that calculations you have to do. And in this case, computer will help you. So computer में already feed किया जाता है program में कि इतना distance होगा तो hydrogen bonding बोल देना इतना तो ये vendor wall interactions हो रहा है इतने में ये chance हो सकता है वो आप computer बता देगा क्योंकि उसमें already आपने data feed किया होगा. This is what all the programs are doing. So Any I other question? Well, I have yes, please. Sir, I wanted to ask that you used Bayesian classification in your uh, model. So yes. there are other class uh, algorithms. So algorithms are there. Like I told, there are SVM, neural networks. They are, they are already there. On got the good yes, results. Yes, we, yes, we tried with all all of them, but uh, we found we I have the data for all three of them. Uh, but Bayesian works better for the data which we have. So, and Nitish Malhotra also wanted to ask something. You can ask. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, Hello. It was a great talk, and uh, it was nice to hear from you. Like after so many years. So, I have a question uh, in regards with combinatorial, uh, combinatorial uh, drug therapy, and how do one uh, incorporate? Like different gene interactions and protein interactions, which happen in bacteria, to kind of devise a combination of uh, drugs using machine machine learning. Very nice question. Yes, uh, it's very tough because you have to incorporate systems biology first of all. First of all, you should know all the pathways where they are combining because one pathway is interacting with another pathway also. If you are targeting one particular way. and this part is difficult in such because you should have systems biology intact network in hand before moving further so first of all you have to train the system with your network that this molecule is in like suppose i'll start with glycolysis so if you see glycolysis you take glucose and moving till pyruvic acid so from glucose to pyruvic acid there are so many enzymes which are there like uh, glyceraldehyde three phosphate hydrogenase phosphofructokinase there are so many enzymes which are there suppose i am targeting uh, phosphofructokinase A hypothetical example I am giving you. So, if you are targeting the phosphofructokinase enzyme, that pathway is further linked to TCA cycle. That pathway is linked to further different cycles. How the level change of my glyc glycolysis inhibition is affecting your TCA cycle or other pathways which are interlinked? Uh, you have to train your system with all these things in one go. I never tried that, but yes, this is a good. Uh, idea uh, i'll definitely uh, look for some good system biologist and try for this also thank you for the idea thank you sir but i, I nitish i never tried with this maybe you can try it. yeah maybe in future yes 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 you can try but i never did this i never did this so i will not say it cannot be done but i have not even seen some papers like this also i agar koi mile to please share it with me also i, I never saw something like this can be done okay sir yeah yeah so i think we are done with questions so thank you so much sir for this amazing talk and as a researcher i feel you give us new insights into the drug discovery and i hope it will be helpful for every researcher associated with the drug discovery and working in this field and or and surely we will have you again on bio footprints and it's been a great session i i, I, I would like like to thank um, professor ramachandran he also joined thank you sir uh, for joining uh, my talk uh, professor rama ramachandran is from igib and uh, when he joined igib when i was doing my phd so i'm very happy he joined for my talk today thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much dr thank you so much gagan it's i once again uh, wish to express uh, my gratitude uh, and i just love the way you fielded all the questions came up with such brilliant answers we enjoyed the question answer the session as much as we enjoyed your lecture thanks once again Thank you everyone. Thank you ma'am. Thank you.